Thinking isn't agreeing or disagreeing. That's voting. Robert Frost said that. It's one of the bases for critical thinking. Thinking is about processing information. It's about coming to your own opinions after all possible sides have been valued. Someone also once said that everyone holds, uh, everyone is entitled to their opinion. That is true. But bear in mind that not all opinions on every issue have equal weight. Sometimes expertise falls into play. Sometimes um, greater knowledge of a particular issue falls into play. The topic of this video is democracy. This is an issue which has been at heart of our civilization for the better part of 300 years now for this particular incarnation. Um, but it's been in uh, it's been since back of ancient Greek and Roman times from the times of Aristotle and even ancient Rome in their Republican uh, view, uh, view of well what they consider to be a democracy before Imperator Augustus to, uh, Augustus Caesar Octavian Caesar more specifically took over and became uh, Imper Imperator Augustus <sighs> there are two now there's been some debate about uh, about the idea of democracy one of the little known things that I believe it was either Ben no Ben Franklin I was it Ben Franklin or was it Thomas Jefferson who said this but around the time of the American Revolution which was one of the uh, greatest you know founders for democracy in North America it was originally actually meant ironically they were of the landholder view of democracy if you owned land you voted because therefore you were the one running the plantation or the business and you were the only one who understood the issue they said that uh, they said they actually said that democracy was not for the proles. Excuse me. Oh. Mm. You see this ball of phlegm? That's the bullshit that much of the upper crust would have you believe. However, they do have a point about democracy, and this is where democracy democracy in the other example goes too far to the other extreme. And this is what's called the ad populum fallacy. I've mentioned it before quite a few times in various videos about uh, just because a group of people believe something does not necessarily mean that it's true. Well, quoting polls may be one thing when it comes to dealing with political and uh, party issues. However, if you're dealing for what the good of the people is, that can only go so far. Also, if you, are, if you have a voting populace, who is uninformed on a particular issue or on a series of issues running to government, then how do you expect the populace to vote on who's going to govern them if they don't spend much time on it? You're going to get, you know, then uh, someone said, um, uh, what was it? Um, vote good government or get the government. I don't remember. I'm paraphrasing here, but um, vote good government or expect get the government you deserve. But, okay, here's the thing. I, in the current standpoint of democracy, we have had problems with George W. Bush getting back in, or how should we say, there's been some dispute over George W. Bush's policy, stuff like that, getting back in. But even with that, there have been plenty of examples of people who have been very popular, but uh, or have been very popular around election time, but were uh, did stuff that was very bad for the Canadian, uh, for the various publics, and uh, or or became unpopular with people overall for for the most part because of their policies and still were able to gain popularity even for a short period of time to get back into power a prominent example of this is Prime Minister Brian Mulroney uh, for those of you Americans who are unfamiliar with him uh, Brian Mulroney was a, Can a Canadian Prime Minister for the uh, first eight years of the 1980s um, he was elected into power uh, as the head of the Conservative Party he brought about. Uh, he was the one. He was the prime minister of Canada at the time that uh, the North American Free Trade Agreement was assigned. Now the thing is, what's interesting is that the way that um, the effects of this meant that uh, the Canadian dollar ended up becoming uh, less than the U.S. dollar, and we ended up uh, having various problems with our industry as a result. This made him largely unpopular with Canadians uh, due to the. Um, now I'm not going to say that the. Uh, now, interesting, but here's the interesting thing. He came in for one term. He was very highly, supposedly, unpopular. But here's the interesting bit. 
he was able to swing people with a whole bunch of pie in the sky, uh, with a whole bunch of promises that things were going to be better during his next term. And everybody believed it. And so they voted him in again for a second term. Where is the flaw in this logic line? Obviously, it could be one way that the just because the bulk of the people believed it, that therefore it wasn't true. But the point is that he still got voted in based on a wordsmith, that uh, based on a bunch of promises that the 90% of Canadians believed, or that the majority enough of Canadians believed, that they voted him back in. But he got kicked out after his second term because they learned their mistake of having, uh, because of the fact that he uh, only made uh, things progressively worse for Canadians. He is known in Canada as Lion Brian, the man who made uh, who made the most promises and broke the most promises in our parliament in, in Canada. But this is an example. There are probably no doubt other presidents and prime ministers and people you can think of. Uh, George W. Bush made a claim, and people believed uh, that, the, and, and for the for the largest for the longest time, um, people approved the, um, the a large chunks of the Senate and Congress approved the war in Iraq on the grounds that they believed that there were weapons of mass destruction in there. But just because they uh, believed it, did that mean that it was true? Well, let's look at the evidence. There was, re there was uh, reports that that uh, CIA footage they had used was about two decades out of date. And they, never, and they haven't found a weapon of mass destruction in Iraq yet. So the question is, again, just because the multiple people believed that it was necessary, does that mean, mean that it was true? John Kerry was one of the people who believed it at first, but then when lack of evidence showed up, then he changed his mind. But, and he was one of those ones that within the majority. Was it true? Occam's razor might suggest not. Here's my... Okay, I digress. I will now get to the thesis of my argument. Democracy as it currently stands right now, particularly in light of the fact of what I've said in my previous videos of lack of scientific uh, understanding and lack of critical thinking uh, knowledge, I suspect that democracy in and of its own standpoint right now is flawed and possibly dangerous if and only if People are susceptible to manipulation. So here's what I suggest. We amp up in high schools and in universities the mandatory necessity to take a critical thinking class. Just learning the tools. Uh, just learning the tools of logic, learning the tools of how people manipulate, and learning the critical thinking fallacies. Then also give them a little bit of a run over of science versus pseudoscience, and on the other part, try to strongly encourage a scientific and other uh, and uh, or try to encourage people to get more fully informed on issues before they make an opinion just based on what they've been told. If we do that, and if people actually take more of an interest in their day-to-day uh, -day lives, again remembering that uh, there are other human beings around, and if you improve the system that you live in, eventually it will come back to improve for you, uh, your standard of living. So if people, um, uh, you know, if people start becoming more enlightened, self-interested anyway, they'll want to take part in, they'll want to be uh, more interested in politics because they'll realize that their decision, a more informed decision, could be better for, uh, for the overall public. Also, mandatory voting, uh, a mandatory voting law would be something good. By getting everybody out to vote, who knows? I, uh, particularly if they're a well-informed public uh, or, well, or a critically thinking public, you just might be able to get more competent government in and reduce the dangers that are, are involved with the ad populum fallacy. Anyway, that's just my thought. Take it for what you will. Toodles.